Peace, Hotep, Anku Jasaneb, Assalamu alaikum. What it do, black people? Hopefully, everyone's having a wonderful, smooth transition back into uh, real life, <laughs> real school life. Uh, hopefully, um, I'm having a good time as well. I feel like I haven't actually talked to y'all live in a while. And I don't like that. But uh, I will be back live with you all uh, on Monday. So that'll be great. And I think I have a couple of new students who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting. Uh, so uh, right now I say to you new students, hello. Uh, my name is Baba Ayo Kunle and I am your Python uh, programming uh, instructor. So uh, that is what's going on right now. Today is going to be a relatively uh, easy video. Um, not too much going on. He's going to be learning from a, um, uh, a gentleman by the name, I think it's Kenneth something or other. Uh, he's actually a guy who I learned a lot from in regards to the Python language. Uh, very, very knowledgeable. And he makes, he does a good job of making it easy to digest for people who might be newbies, which I was at one time. And so, um, uh, initially I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to go over that and then I'm going to discuss uh exactly why this coding thing is even important right those of you who've been in class already know you've heard me i guess uh talk about that to a great extent uh, i've given all my analogies and metaphors and similes and all that good stuff right um but there's an even more uh real a more serious reason why programming computer programming is very 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 important and I'm going to explain that. I'm going to explain that first. And then I'm going to press play on this video. And as you can see, the video is actually 53 minutes long. But this class is only 45 minutes long. So that circle does not fit into that square hole, right? Uh, doesn't exactly work out. So um, you're not going to get through the entire video, obviously. But we're going to get through a lot of it. Kenneth does a good job of going through it. Um, very well. He, he, he does very, very good examples. Like I said, uh, he's actually um, the teacher or the instructor for a website, that, another website that I learn uh, other languages on uh, called Team Treehouse. Uh, it's, that's a paid service, but you should pay for your education if it's important to you. So, um, a matter of fact, I know one scholar who dedicates to, not a scholar, but a, a smart person. He said he told me he dedicates ten thousand dollars a year to his education. He learns uh, all the time, and he dedicates or sets aside ten thousand dollars every year to go to different uh, seminars, to buy different books, to purchase different courses. So he's clearly going to be learning for quite some time, and takes it very serious because he puts his money where his mind is, right? Uh, he probably won't be out buying, you know, $400 shoes. <laughs> He'll probably be buying a $400 book. And which one is more valuable in the long run, right? So, okay, that's how today's going to go. So, um, settle in, hold on to your seats, lean back, close your eyes, and take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth shake off that last class and those last few classes and these last few days and let's get ready to jump into the warm waters of computer programming and why it's important ready all right all right all right pause i gotta take a drink of water Ugh. that water's not very good <clears throat> goodness gracious Make sure that that water was for drinking. Anyway, okay. Uh, I'm, you know what? I'm sorry that you all are just looking at a blank screen. Let me put something on this screen here. I'm going to come back to you, Mr. Kenneth. Let's see. Uh, what should we put here? Uh, African cities. Let's see what we're going to I've got to give you a good visual while, while I'm talking, right? All right, so here we go. I'm going to press play on that African cities. A little music is playing. Talk to it. I'm going to stop it right there, right? While I talk. So, 
Basically, let me tell you what's going on in the world of computer programming and black people very quickly. Currently, uh, Facebook is on some kind of crusade to remove people who are very, very pro-black. Um, there have been at least uh, about 10 people who are very pro-black and who are scholars, not regular folk that's just saying crazy stuff online, but actual scholars and revolutionaries uh, who are actually teaching the people, galvanizing the people, unifying the people, all those wonderful euphemisms that lead to unity, right? So um, they're removing these people for very, very silly reasons. Some of them are getting suspended for seven days. Some of them can't access their accounts for 30 days. Some of them are removed um, uh, indefinitely, right? Uh, and so this brought some attention to something that's very, very, very important. As Facebook uh, entering Black History Month is removing as much black history speakers <laughs> uh, from their platform as possible, um, it, 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 causes, it caused us to think. It caused people to, to come together and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is actually going on here? And there are a few people who came up with a lot of different reasons. A few people were like, oh, they just hating on us. Oh, they don't want to see us come together. Oh, you know, this and that, this and that. How do you feel about that, right? And so my response to some people uh, in regards to this was, I'm glad that they are doing this because uh, these are the kind of things that cause us as black people to come together. If we're too comfortable in a white world, we won't want to leave that white world and build a world for ourselves. We'll continue to let them feed us and give us something to drink and entertain us and build our homes and make our cars when that's something that everyone all other people in the world do for themselves so um when they do come down on us hard and remind us who's the boss in their world it causes us to look around and be like hey what uh, exactly are we doing here why are we in such a vulnerable position right how come they can hit us and we can't hit them back well it's because we're standing in their living room. It's their house. They make the rules. You're on Facebook. That's Mark Zuckerberg's platform. And he has shareholders because they're publicly traded on the stock market. And most of his shareholders are white. And they don't want to see all this black stuff on their platform. They have every right to feel that way. So bring in a website. Well, let me introduce it this way. Boyce Watkins, who's a wonderful economist, um, financial strategist, black dude, repping real hard for uh, the black nation, and who was um, removed from Facebook, started shouting out this other social media platform that's owned by a brother. And it was called blackspot.com, B-L-A-Q. SPOT.com. It's a social media platform very similar to Facebook, but clearly for black people, built by a brother and his wife. So, apparently, a lot of black folks started logging on to his site. Like his membership went through the roof after Facebook started kicking black people off. Face, uh, these black people started going over there and like, oh my goodness, that, that's a place for us. Okay, now we can go over here and we can say what we want to say and we don't have to worry about anybody kicking us off. Now, I say all of that to say this. Two things, primarily. This guy who built this site, I think his name is Daryl something or other. Y'all will see it if you go to the site. And you're on your laptops now, you can go ahead and punch into it if you like. Um... And I'm going to hit mute on this and press play so we can kind of get a good visual while I'm talking. Um, basically, what's going on here is this gentleman learned several computer languages, built his own social media platform based on the information that he had learned, and now he is making money from it. Now, that's one. That's, how, that's one way you can use computer programming to support yourself and your people. Here's the problem, and this is here's the problem that occurred after that, and this is uh, issue number two. 
once the black people started leaving Facebook and started going over to black spot, black spot started getting attacked by hackers. So he was doing just fine when nobody really knew who he was except for a few people. But when Facebook started kicking off black folks and black folks started shouting out black spot on Facebook and more black people were leaving Facebook going over to black spot, black spot started getting attacked by hackers. Now, the owner of Black Spot needs to be able to use computer programming to fight off these hackers. These hackers are superior computer programmers. That's all a hacker is, is a computer programmer who uses their computer programming skills for nefarious reasons, right? So, look at that, 3.2 million people in Kenya as of 2015. Look at this city. This, these are African cities. This is not a jungle. This looks better than a lot of the places here in the United States. Look at that. So anyway, the guy who built Black Spot has to have and use superior computer programming to fight off these hackers. The problem is he's alone. He's doing it by himself. The hackers are coming in droves. They're coming in teams. And so he's being attacked by a group of computer programmers, most likely Caucasian or maybe even hired black folks or hired Asians or hired other people, but basically white folks, um, or let's just say the enemy uh, of black liberation is attacking our media platform. Now, if I and my brother and a few friends of mine uh, got together, we could call the owner of Black Spot and we could tell him, hey man, we're computer programmers and we're here to help you. Let's get it. Put us on and, and, and we're going to hook you up. Let, let, let's go. We're going to fight off these hackers together. Uh, where we start at. Sh show me your code so I can go in and plug the holes up. Right? If he had more black people to come in and help him, more people with the necessary and requisite skills to come in and assist in that manner, we could win this. Black Spot will be up and running smoothly um, without being hindered by any hackers. This, those are two very, very important reasons why this kind of thing is important. We live in a technical world. If you don't have some, if you're not aware of and don't have some kind of computer programming skill set, you're going to be at a disadvantage. Because even if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that, you're going to have to use computer programming, the internet in order to get your message out because we live in a technical age and most people are online. So you learning Python, which is a high level language, which means it's used in the majority of social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Dropbox, all use Python, right? And that's just the first language that you'll learn. You're probably going to learn more, but these languages are very, very, very important. Learning these things are so important because literally the fight is in cyberspace the fight is online and the punches are being thrown with lines of code so we might be strong here in the physical we might be able to do push-ups lift weights all that good stuff but if we're not strong in our computer programming then we're going to lose so this is super important for us to be able to know these things and learn these things and then use these things to build online and offline when you can teach or something like that and, and go from there. This is going to, these skills are going to help uh, resurrect the black nation. And so what you're doing is not just learning some abstract, random, useless computer language. You're learning something that could really help save people's lives. So I want y'all to take it like that. Take it in, soak it up, bathe in it, shower in it, eat it, drink it, whatever metaphor suits you, <laughs> and, and go from there. So uh, it's a wonderful thing. I'm glad to have y'all. Now let's go ahead and watch a little bit of Kenneth here as he goes in. Um, there's not much time left. I'm probably only going to put on about 10 or 15 minutes of this, and then I want you all to go to your um, uh, solo learn and work on your functional we should be when i come back on monday everyone who can be should be at at least the functional
programming module. The functional programming module, which are only leave three modules left for us to uh, move through. All right, sounds good, sounds good. I'm gonna leave our wonderful, beautiful, amazing African cities here. This is wonderful. I don't see no jungle, man. I see just wonderful, amazing, uh, just divine civilization, you know? So let's go back to Kenneth here. Also, um, while I'm going back to uh, our functional programming teacher here. You need a website. Pause, please, pause, please. Um, another quick thing, we're going to separate the students, uh, in this class, or I'm going to separate the students in the class. Uh, everyone's not going to be ready to do raspberry Pi uh, when it's time to do it in a couple weeks. Uh, I don't believe everybody will be ready to do it. I think it's possible that everybody can do it. Uh, but there are a few students who, uh, will have to do basically the whole <laughs> the whole course almost the whole class uh to, to catch up before then so those are those students who are ready uh will move on to the raspberry pi those students who are not ready will continue their work and solo learn and we're going to have uh two classes moving forward monday and wednesdays and i'm going to have all students in both classes but i'm going to spend uh, some time working with the Raspberry Pi students and other uh, times uh, and some time working with uh, the students who might be trying to catch up and get to the Raspberry Pi level. So you'll know when we get back on Monday, that's what we're getting into. So let's go ahead and I'm going to play some of this. And keep in mind, this is functional programming with Pythons. If you want to continue on with um, this here, you can. There are all kind of Python tutorials. If you get stuck on something in Solo Learn, come to YouTube, type in Python, and then the name of the module and the information you need will pop right up. And you got instant classroom right there. So, all right, here we go. Why not do it yourself? With Wix, you can create your own professional website. Functional programming with Kenneth Love. How many of you, so a lot of you do Python, how many of you have done functional programming in Python, JavaScript, any language that supports it, which is most of them? Some of you? All right. So functional programming is a fun little area. Uh, so the basic idea is that you do all of your computing, all your programming, just by evaluating functions. So you Now listen, I'm assuming because I can't go back and edit this right now. I don't. I wouldn't have enough time to make another video. I, I'm assuming you all can hear this. I believe you can. I'm assuming you can hear me. <laughs> Hopefully. If something's going wrong and you can't hear me or you can't hear it, just look at the video from last class, last week. Last week's class. And uh, you'll basically be caught up with today only without the black spot story. And that would be sad because I want y'all to know about the black spot story. So, uh, but if you can't hear this, um, you can go ahead back and, and take a peek at that. We're only going to do about 10 minutes of this and I'm going to, I'm going to call the rap and then you guys can go on doing what it is. Uh, I requested that you do and what you feel like you need to do and I'll catch back up with you on Monday, but let's go 10 minutes to functional programming with Kenneth Love. You always have expressions like this thing is equal to that thing. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, it really helps when first uh, functions are first class citizens of the language, which means that you can pass functions around. Ooh. Uh, so you can send functions to other functions. You can make a variable just equal to a function and then call that thing over and over again. You can do all that fun stuff. All this applies to Python, which is great. Another rule for functional programming, and this is one we're going to bring up a lot, is that functions shouldn't have side effects. So if I run a function, with the same data, I should get the exact same output every single time. That seems kind of obvious, but let's talk about it. So in Python, if I do this, what is the list that I passed in on the outside? Right, I had a list and I passed it in, yeah? Let's just do it. All right. So we're in Python. 42, 28, 1, 105, and 2. All right. 
Messy list, yeah? Now cheating. All right, so there's my function. If I call reverse list and I pass in A, what do I get back? Right, so now what is A? Is it my old list or is it the reversed list? Nope. This function has a side effect because this function calls list.reverse, which reverses list in place because lists are mutable. You don't want that. You don't want side effects. Okay. So, you, because <laughs> we don't want side effects. So, we're going to talk about addressing side effects in a moment, but we'll go through some more bullet points here. Uh, functions should also be limited in their scope and their functionality. You want to write small little functions. Lots of them, but they're really small. All right, they just do a little bit. For instance, this is very ew. Um, let's look at this, and we'll see part of why it's bad, too. So we take in a list, uh, we reverse the list, we swap the first and last items of the list, we stick a thing into the list. If it's a string, then we uh, reverse the first thing that's in the list. Or sorry, if the first thing in the list is a string, we reverse the first thing in the list. Uh, otherwise, if it's a number, then we int divide it by two, and then we eventually return the list. This is horrible. It does a lot of stuff. It doesn't have any side effects, though, uh, which is nice and weird, but it's still ugly. So we could break it apart into nice small functions, right? Because we want them to be limited in what they do. Small scopes, small amounts of functionality. This isn't necessarily better, because it's still doing really ugly stuff down there on the bottom, but it's better, because it's small, right? OK, last thing, and then we'll get to some code. Well, almost last thing. It's great if functions can chain. So if I can have multiple functions that always give me back more data, I can put those functions inside of each other, and I can do a whole lot of stuff in one line that's all very explicit, but it's not scattered out doing crazy weird stuff in each function. OK, so that means we're going to use return a lot, way more than you may be expecting. And like we said before with the list.reverse, we don't want mutations. We don't want to return like, things that have been mutated. OK, we get some chaining friendly things from Python. Yay. So let's start with map. Anybody heard of map? A few people. Anybody want to tell me what map does? Without reading this, I know it's already up there, but without reading it, what does map do? So what map does, <laughs> map takes a function. Map is a function, it takes a function, and then it takes an iterable. And map runs that function on every single thing that's in the iterable and gives us back a new iterable, right? So if I have a function that turns numbers, turns things into strings, right? It's really annoying that I can't command tab from there. All right. You've all seen str, right? The string class. And if I do str and a number, I get back a string of the number. Yeah? Nothing crazy there? OK. So if I send in the string function to map, you know what? Hold on. There we go. If I send in the string function to map, and I give it a list of numbers, thanks, Python 3, for making me look silly. I get back this map object, which is a generator. All right, there we go. I get back a list of strings of numbers. So really handy if I'm like, I want to make sure everything in here is a string. Make sure this is all strings, right? So all I've done is I've applied the string function to everything that's in the list. All right, we could do the opposite of that. Now we see how well I can. Wow. There we go. And now we've got ints instead of strings. Okay, we're going to do some crazier stuff with map in a moment, but that's the idea of map. Run a function over everything that's in a list, or a dict, or a tuple, or whatever. Okay. Filter is our next one. How many of you have messed uh, He just named a few things. One of the things he said was a dict. A D-I-C-T. D-I-C-T. 
short for dictionary. Dictionary. D-I-C-T. I don't want there to be any misconceptions. So filter. No, nah, a couple people. All right. So filter is a handy way of saying make sure all this stuff is true or is like I want it to be. So ignore the or none for right now. If we pass a function into filter, that function must return true or false. For everything that's in the iterable, we run that function. If that function gives back true, that thing that was in the iterable gets kept. If it returns false, that thing is discarded. Okay? So if I'm like, I've got a list of people and I want to make sure all these people are 21 or over, they'll have an age attribute. I can write a function that checks the age, make sure the age is 21 or up, and if it is, returns true, otherwise returns false. All right? So a quick, easy way to filter through a bunch of people. The none is a fun little shortcut. If you just pass none instead of a function, it only returns things in the iterable that are truthy in Python. So no zeros, no empty strings, no empty lists, nothing like that. But you'll get back all of your lists that, or all of your strings that actually have content, all of your numbers that are not zero, all that kind of stuff. We'll do a lot of stuff with filter too. And our last one we're going to talk about is reduce. Uh, reduce is a little weird compared to filter and map. Reduce always gives you back just one thing. And the function always takes two arguments. So what it does is for the first two items in the iterable, it runs the function with them. It takes whatever the answer of that function is, runs it against the third item in the interval, and so on, until there's just one answer that comes out. So if my function just adds two numbers together, I pass it a big list, I get the sum of the list. If it multiplies things together, I get the product of the list. Right? We'll do stuff with reduce as well. That's enough talk. Um, so, let's go do stuff. All right. Wow, I got a lot of things open. So, there was a GitHub repo that had these three files over here, test filter, test map, and test reduce in it. And we can test all of those at once by running Python unit test. All of our tests pass because we ran 15 tests and we had 15 failures. So let's fix that. So which one do you want to do first? Filter, map, or reduce? I don't care. We can do any of them. Filter, map, and reduce? All right, let's do filter. Uh, I'm going to close this one. And, all right, there we go. So we just have Emacs. Yes, Emacs. I think it was on Vim the last time I presented up here. All right, so we've got a bunch of stuff up here. Uh, we've got some nums, we've got a state, we've got some values, we've got a bunch of strings, and then we've got this stream of numbers, uh, which this is a generator pattern. I talked about how filter gives us back generators. We're not going to worry about what generators are. Just, yeah, that's why it's a stream instead of, like, number list. And then we have this word list function that opens up um, my dictionary that's built into my computer and gives me back all of the words. To be able to have a perfect website, it doesn't have to be frustrating. It can be simple. It can Commercial. It's built into my computer and gives me back all of the words that are in that dictionary, which is a lot of words. <laughs> Safe enough for this. All right, so then we've got some tests. So let's look here at our first test. Our first test is positive numbers. So I want to make sure that all of the numbers that are in this positive numbers uh, variable are greater than or equal to zero. So no negative numbers. <laughs> okay. But if I look at nums, I got a negative two in there. And I want to get rid of that. And I'm going to be um, somewhat obtuse and not just use remove. So let's write this. So positive numbers has to equal something. So, filter. There's going to be a function, and there's going to be nums, right? So, I want interaction on this, by the way. You can all yell out things at me, and I'll ignore the things I don't like. So, we need to write a function that only gives us back the numbers that are greater than zero. So, what are we going to call it? Anybody? How about positives? 
Yeah, does that work? Okay, and it needs to take a single item, so it's gonna take a num or an in mu. Okay, inside of this function, how do we check if a number is greater than zero or greater than negative one, rather? Turn num greater than or equal to zero. Does that work? Good for everybody? Okay, that's it. That's my entire function. All I'm doing is making sure that number is bigger than that. And in here, I have to tell it what. Okay, so I think I'm going to go ahead and stop it there. Hopefully you learned something there. Uh, that's functional programming in Python. Uh, maps is a uh, function. Uh, within the functional programming uh, paradigm, I guess, but just thought process, right? Uh, and so uh, that's something that's good to learn, something that you'll need to learn in order to be able to do your Raspberry Pi effectively. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I think we're going to call it. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to wrap this video up. I think it's right at about 30 minutes, 31 minutes or so. And I'm going to give you this last 15 minutes to go into your solo learn and go ahead and start working on that. Make sure that you all are... Um, giving your solo learn enough attention your python coding in solo learn enough attention so that when we come back on monday you haven't forgotten everything that um that we've gone over that we've learned and that uh make sure that you're at functional programming or beyond functional programming that would be great um make sure you all turn in your assignments uh you can always go back and uh re and resubmit or submit for the first time any old assignments make sure you're doing that i i don't always focus so much on grades but i do want everyone's grades to be passing uh, i want you all to do well in this class but as you all know it's not so much about grades for me it's about what somebody said Somebody knows. It. I think somebody just said it. Didn't somebody just say it? Yes, it's about understanding. If you understand, you'll get good grades. Uh, so I'm not concerned about it the other way around. Just because you get good grades doesn't mean that you understand. You can have a total lack of understanding and still get good grades just because you memorize something. But that doesn't mean that you know it. But if you understand, you'll always get good grades. Unless you have some kind of test anxiety or something like that. Then you might do bad on a test. The regular assignments you should do well on 100% of the time if you have understanding. So, all right, that's pretty much it. Um, Y'all can go check out this video if you like. Functional Programming with Python with Kenneth Love, a uh, great teacher of the Python language and others. And that's pretty much it. So, uh, hopefully everyone had a, a good class. Hopefully everyone will go check out Black Spot and talk to your parents about Black Spot. Uh, make them aware of it. They can check it out. If there are any other computer programmers, computer programming parents out there, make sure they might want to lend their services to uh, old boy over at Black Spot. That'd be great. So, all right. Well, I will talk to y'all on Monday. Next week, we've got two classes, Monday and Wednesday. We'll have two classes for the rest of the year, and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. And I'll talk to you all uh, very, very soon, somewhat five, five days from now. So, uh, peace. Hotep. Aku Jasineb, Assalamu Alaikum, Ajayo Kunliyah.